Welcome, Houdini community all around the globe. Welcome again to part four of this tutorial series. I also made a procedural setup to generate the sizes of the chambers. I wanted to be able to art direct the sizes and be able to slightly randomize the sizes to make it more biological by adding imperfections. And I obviously also wanted to be able to set the number of chambers. The rhythm and sizes of the chambers are actually first created just as attributes on points on a line. The points are used as memory locations for values. You can also think of this like a variable in computer programming that can store an array of values. This is a concept that I use quite a lot also in other setups. You could also alternatively just use one point and create an array type attribute, but I think the concept used here is much more intuitive and Houdini-like. So what did I do here? The points get the required attributes. They are chamber start, chamber length, and chamber end. The P position attribute is just ignored. And let's have a look at the UI here. At one, you set the number of chambers the ammonite will have. Two, this is the default length of a chamber in points, or better, an amount of points. This is not the length in units or meters or centimeters. At three, the last chamber needs special treatment and for this setup needs to be at least double. You will see later why, but maybe even more than double depending on the ammonite you want to build. At four, a ramp to adjust the length of the chambers. Here we have the six nodes that are used to create the chamber length attributes. One creates the line with the points that will hold the attribute values. Two, an attribute creates op creates the chamber length attribute and sets the default value. Three, an attribute vop, a ramp to shape the chamber length attribute values. Four, an attribute randomize sop, a surface operator, that's what sop stands for, randomizes the chamber length again. And five, an attribute wrangle sop to calculate chamber start and chamber end and the total length. So the first sop creates a line with as many points as the ammonite should have chambers. The P position attribute is not important. You can even turn off the display in the spreadsheet if you want. You can do that with the view dropdown in the geometry spreadsheet here marked green. You can't, however, delete the P position point attribute. I tried and Houdini won't let me create points without a position. The second node is an attribute creates op. It creates the chamber length attribute and sets the value set in the UI. So first all chambers will have the same length here, 60 points. You can see this here, all 60 points. It is a point attribute, class point. The type is integer. And the precision is 32 bit. Have a look at the geometry spreadsheet. Here, yeah, this is the geometry spreadsheet. Next is a VOP. It is a VEX operator. In this case, it modifies attributes, so it is an attribute VOP. The attribute VOP is set to run over points and not over primitives, vertices, or numbers. It creates a ramp. This is a ramp that modifies the chamber length attribute. Let's look at the geometry spreadsheet again. The values are now increasing, like set in the ramp. So this line is going up, and the values are going up. So um, what does a ramp do? On the x-axis from left to right is the input value, on the y-axis is the output value. Those values are always from zero to one, or better, this is what you can adjust the ramp for in X. In Y, you can have values greater than one or smaller than zero, but you can't see that in Houdini. It would be nice to have a ramp where you can set the ranges, but just doesn't exist currently. So in this example, at zero, it would have an output a little less than 0.1, something like 0.08. At 0.5 input value on X, you would be about 0.25 for the y value. 
Or if you have a straight line going from bottom left to top right, like here, the input is the same as the output value. Zero here is zero on that axis, and 0 0.5 on this axis is 0 0.5 of, of this axis. If you have a line at the bottom only, the output will always be zero. At the top, it will be one. In the middle, like shown here, it would always create 0 0.5 output value. But you can also create wobbly lines by adding as many control points as you need, or mix straight and curved lines. For that, you change the interpolation. And now, let's look inside the attribute wob. By double-clicking, you can look inside a wob and edit it. There is on the left the geometry wob globals, this here, here in green. You will find this in most wobs. Remember, we can set the wob to run over points, so this network will be called for each and every point sent through it. NumPD gives you a single value, the number of points this wob runs on. Here, you can see this here at 1. PTNum gives you the point number of one point. It will count from 0 to NumPD minus 1. So it will count from 0 to 9 if you have 10 points. In yellow, we have the RAM parameter. Remember, RAMs are always in the range from 0 to 1 on X and Y. This is creating the ramp. 4. The two bind nodes. One of them picks up a value of an attribute, the other one writes to that attribute. In this case, we want to modify the chamber lengths. So we bind the chamber lengths. Here is the input, here is the output. So what happens here? For each point, a multiplier is generated that is multiplied with the chamber length attribute value. So y minus 1. Well, let's say you have 10 points. The points are numbered 0 to 9. For the first point, which is point 0, you want 0 as a result of the multiplication. For the tenth point, which is point 9, as you started counting at 0, you want 1 as the result. So 1 divided by 9 times 9 equals 1. If you would not subtract 1, you would get 1 divided by 10 equals 0 0.1, and 0 0.1 times 9 is only 0 0.9. So why not start counting at 1 instead of 0? Well, 1 time whatever greater 0 would never be 0. I hope I explained that well here. By the way, you can actually look at the VEX code that is generated by the VOP. Remember, VOP means VEX operator. And you could also do this in pure VEX code. I mean, what I just built, the whole network. But I sometimes actually prefer WOPs for pure personal taste reasons. You might be more of a code sinker, and I also like syncing in notes. Anyway, this view VEX code is also very cool for learning VEX in general. The next node is an attribute randomized node. Here, a value between 0 and 7 is added to the value. You can set that however you like. We could also have a node like this before the ramp with a different effect. Actually, that might make more sense here, but this is just part of designing the actual resulting shape. You could also subtract, multiply by changing the type of the operation. And there's quite a few modes for the distribution of the randomization, and they are quite cool and powerful. Maybe I will make a tutorial just about that in the future. Let's see. Really cool stuff. Cauchy Lorenz, logarithmic normal, exponential, normal Gaussian, inside a sphere, directional orientation. Attribute randomized, very powerful node. The attribute wrangle. Here I have written a small VEX script that creates the chamber start and chamber end attributes and set the value for the last open chamber with a multiplier. Sorry, I'm not dissecting the script here, but maybe a few words about when to use VEX wrangles and when to use WOPs. It is actually not that easy to explain, but let me try. For some things like mathematical formulas, I prefer wrangles. For RAMs, I like to use WOPs. When thinking about a given problem, I sometimes get ideas for code and sometimes I think in notes. For shaders, for example, I rarely think in code. For geometric transformations, I also prefer nodes. What is better? Actually, you can use both, and speed is the same for both. I mean, the speed when it's 
executed. So it is personal preference and whatever works best for you is the correct way. And there is also an inline VEX node to use a VEX snippet in a VOPS node network. So you can mix and match to your taste. And the last node is just the handy null. Nulls do process nothing but help reading node setups and you should use them to read values from them. They can be the last node, for example, and so whatever you change before them does not matter and whenever you change something, you can still read the values from that last node. The total length calculated by this ramp setup is used by the resample node to resample the curve. The total length calculated by this ramp setup is used by the resample node to resample the curve. For that, I used an expression and a spare input and a relative parameter reference. I will explain more about that later when building the preview in the next chapter. So I don't want to do stuff over and over again. That's boring. So I'm actually going to build only one Houdini setup live together with you. And that will be the preview um, setup used to generate that interactive preview. Now let's also look at how to actually set the values for the MNI within Houdini. It is actually quite nice to use null nodes to hold interfaces so you can collect all the various attributes and parameters from all over the place into one place. And here I've collected most of the stuff to set up the chambers. You can change the number of chambers, you can change the number in points, and more important, you can adjust the, the curve here. So let's say you want them in the start really long, then getting shorter, but normally you want them in the start short and that getting longer. And yeah, it's actually pretty nice and pretty interactive to set that. You can also change the multiplier for the last one. Yes, that's basically it. Ah yeah, and the randomizer I also have here, so you get more variation or less variation. That's all I wanted to show you. And thanks for watching. See you in the next part.